Does the date June 2nd ring a bell for anyone? If you're from Mexico or someone who's paying attention to the news there, you know that it is election time. As citizens go to the polls, Mexico's economy is actually looking very strong. Top 15th in the world to be exact. So why does that matter for investors broadly and for investors in the U.S.? We're going to discuss that right now on UBS Trending. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm Anthony Pastore, and I am joined once again by my chief investment office colleague, Alejo Cherwanko from the Emerging Markets team. Alejo, great to have you here again and uh, talking this time about Mexico specifically. And here's the question I'll kick off to you, which is, besides the election, why are we talking about Mexico right now? Well, it matters because it's only once every 12 years that you've got Mexican elections and U.S. elections taking place on the same calendar year. So that's one, one reason. In addition, you've got the largest election in Mexican history with almost 20,000 officials being chosen to go into office. And it is these people that are going to lead the country through a pretty significant global transformation. We've talked about this in the past. Mm -hmm. The global geopolitical map is being redrawn. Trade routes are being redesigned. There is a lot of nearshoring, ally shoring taking place, and Mexico is a clear beneficiary of that. That's great. And the fact that there are, like you said, almost 20,000 people to be considered for this election is so massive to me. On top of the fact that just globally we have 80 countries, which is about half the world's population going to the polls between January and December, including the U.S. So here, here's a good question for you, because we've talked about this before. But right now, today, as we sit here, what are the reasons that we, as U.S. citizens maybe watching this, we have global people watching this, why should we all have this kind of really good outlook and positivity about Mexico right now? Think about the degree of economic integration between the U.S. and Mexico. Mexico is already the U.S.'s largest trading partner above other countries such as China or Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a yearly flow of $60 billion in terms of remittances from Mexican workers in the U.S. going back into Mexico, right? And uh, look, if you think about some of the U.S.'s signature industrial policy moves of the last few years, I'm thinking about the Inflation Reduction Act, I'm thinking about the CHIPS Act. Both of this encourage reshoring of manufacturing, not only to the United States, but also to key trading partners such as Mexico. Mm. Yeah, looking at that, that uh, diagram of the countries that are below Mexico that are trading partners with the U.S., it's amazing to see even by the large percentage how much, how important Mexico is to our kind of trading life cycle. Yes. Um, and this hasn't always been the case. Right. Mexico has been moving up in terms of importance. And maybe aligned with this, Anthony, what we're seeing is a Mexican economy that is not what people remember. It's a much more resilient, prepared to absorb any sort of shocks uh, today than it used to be maybe 10 or 20 years ago. Take overall debt, for instance. Debt to GDP for the government side of the equation is roughly 50 percent, much lower than that of the United States. But importantly, this is mostly long-term debt. This is mostly local currency denominated debt and in the hands of locals, which makes you a lot more resilient to external shocks. Right. But the, it doesn't come without some potential risks on the horizon, Alejo, because one of the things that you wrote in a recent note was talking about, you know, that there might be a need for fiscal reform uh, this year into 2025 in Mexico. Tell us more about what you're finding there. That's right. We do need to recognize that the uh, path that fiscal spending relative to what's coming in is taking, uh, is, is, has to be improved, mm -hmm. right? And importantly, the national oil company Pemex uh, remains a liability for the government in terms of the amount of support that it requires on a yearly basis. We need a new strategic plan for, for this company. But look, you start from a fairly solid starting point of relatively low levels of debt and uh, a good structure of the debt stock. 
Are, are, are there efforts in place to try and increase tax revenue in the country? How are they trying to maybe stave off some of these potential fiscal problems that they could face down the road? That's being debated. Mm -hmm. um, we think Mexico needs a fiscal reform, and we think the next administration that's going to be in power for six years will need to tackle this early on. Right. What's the view then for an investor? So whether you're sitting in the U.S. or you're watching this from overseas, what are the potential opportunities here when it comes to the country of Mexico? Look, to summarize, we think the economic outlook for Mexico is net-net positive. Uh, we do recognize that there are risks to investors. The quality of institutions in the country has been declining. I'm thinking about control of corruption. I'm thinking about rule of law, voice and accountability. That has been gradually coming down. There is an issue with public safety in certain parts of the country. This is uh, public knowledge. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, penetration of organized crime. But net-net, we do find a range of attractive opportunities, starting with the currency. Uh, the Mexican peso has been one of the best performing currencies in the world over the last year with respect to the U.S. dollar. Many have started to call the peso the super peso, right? And we think uh, this will likely continue. We are projecting a resilient Mexican peso on a forward-looking basis. Then when you look at the universe of companies that operate within Mexico, you've got world-class corporations that are um, very professionally managed, that have good quality balance sheets, and we think there are fixed income opportunities, mm. particularly in this space. And finally, when you consider uh, Mexican equities, they should be supported by fairly positive earnings growth dynamics. Yeah, I mean, it definitely sounds like there's a lot of positivity in there. And obviously, the administration that's in place is really, go really going to have to focus on their energy policies. You talked about Pemex and production, their fiscal policies, and obviously their you know, security policies and things like that. So there's, it's not an easy road, but it seems like there's a path that is being considered at this point. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, great. Alejo, thank you very much. Always good to have you here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's great to kind of expand past our borders to see what else is going on in the world. And again, investment opportunities abound. So good to have you here, as, as always. Thank you for having me. Great. Alejo Chawanko, Chief Investment Office, uh, Officer of Emerging Markets here at UBS. So make sure you check out our website for more content from Alejo and his team, as well as the rest of the CIO here at UBS. You can find that at UBS.com forward slash views. That's our insights page. Lots of great content there for you as well. Plus, you can follow UBS and UBS Studios on social media. We're on all the major channels, including Instagram. Follow us at UBS Trending. Lots of great content there for you. And as always, if you have any, com uh, any questions about what we spoke about today, have a conversation with your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great day, everybody, and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.